Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So centenarians, once considered rare, have now become commonplace. Indeed, they're the fastest growing group of the world's population, with numbers roughly doubling every 10 years since the 1970s. How long can humans live and what determines a long and healthy life? These are questions that have been posed for as long as we can remember. Plato and Aristotle discussed and wrote about the aging process over 2,300 years ago. The pursuit of understanding the secrets behind exceptional longevity, however, isn't easy. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. It involves unraveling the complex interplay of genetic predisposition and also lifestyle factors and how they interact throughout a person's life. Now, a recent study published in the journal GeroScience has unveiled some common biomarkers, and these include levels of cholesterol and glucose in people who live beyond the age of 90. Nonagenarians and centenarians have long been of intense interest to researchers as they may help us to understand how to live longer and perhaps how to age better too. So far, studies of centenarians have often been small and focused on a selected group, for example, excluding centenarians who live in care homes. This latest study is the largest to date, and they compared biomarker profiles measured throughout the life of exceptionally long-lived people and also their shorter-lived peers. They compared the biomarker profiles of people who went on to live past the age of 100 and again their shorter-lived peers. And it investigated the link between profiles and then the chance of becoming a centenarian. The research included data from 44,000 Swedes who underwent health assessments at ages 64 to 99. They were from a sample of what was named the Amoris cohort. These participants were then followed through the Swedish register for up to 35 years. Of these people, 1,224 or 2.7% 2 lived to be 100 years old. The vast majority, 85% of the centenarians were female. 12 blood-based biomarkers related to inflammation, metabolism, liver and kidney function, as well as potential malnutrition and anemia were included. All of these have been associated with aging or mortality in previous studies. The biomarker related to inflammation was uric acid. This is a waste product in the body caused by the digestion of certain foods. They also looked at markers linked to metabolic status and function, including total cholesterol and glucose, and others related to liver function, such as alanine aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase, albumin, gamma glutamyl transferase, alkaline phosphate, and lactate dehydrogenase. They also looked at creatinine, which is linked to kidney function, also iron, and total iron binding capacity, which are linked to anemia. Finally, they also investigated albumin, a biomarker that's associated with nutrition. But what were the findings? They found out that, on the whole, those who made it to their 100th birthday tended to have lower levels of glucose, creatinine and uric acid from their 60s onwards, although the median values didn't differ significantly between centenarians and non-centenarians. The centenarians seldom displayed extremely high or low values. For example, very few of the centenarians had glucose levels above 6.5 millimoles per litre earlier in their lives, or a creatinine level above 125 micromoles per litre. For many of the biomarkers, both centenarians and non-centenarians had values outside of the range considered normal in clinical guidelines. This is probably because these guidelines are set based on a younger and healthier population. When exploring which biomarkers were linked to the likelihood of reaching 100, they found that all but two, those being alanine aminotransferase and albumin, showed a connection to the likelihood of them turning 100. This was even after accounting for age, sex and the burden of disease. The people in the lowest out of the five groups for levels of total cholesterol and iron had a lower chance of reaching 100 when compared to those who had higher levels of total cholesterol and iron. Meanwhile, people in the higher levels of glucose, creatinine and uric acid and markers for liver function also decreased their chances of them becoming a centenarian. In absolute terms, the differences were rather small for some of the biomarkers, while for others, the differences were more substantial. 
For uric acid, for example, the absolute difference was just 2.5%. This means the people in the group with the lowest uric acid levels had a 4% chance of turning 100, but the group with the highest uric acid levels only had a 1.5% chance to make it to 100. Even if these differences that were discovered were overall rather small, they do suggest a potential link between metabolic health, nutrition, and exceptional longevity. However, the study did not allow for any conclusions about which lifestyle factors or genes are responsible for the biomarker values. However, it's reasonable to assume that factors such as nutrition and alcohol intake play a key role. Keeping track of your kidney function and liver values, as well as glucose and uric acid as you get older, is probably not a bad idea. That said, chance probably plays a role at some point in reaching an exceptionally high age. But the fact that differences in biomarkers could be observed over a long time before death does suggest that lifestyle does in fact play a key role. So it appears that having higher levels of total cholesterol and iron gives you a better chance of reaching the age of 100. And lower levels of glucose, creatinine, uric acid and markers for liver function also help you get to 100 too. I've just recently had my three monthly blood test done and I should be checking these markers to see if they're high or low or if they're well within range. Let me know in the comments below, how often do you check your blood markers?